And welcome back to another episode of Even More Mashed Up, the pop culture podcast featuring two professors talking about all things pop culture. I am Patrick. And I am Al. And today, a a small podcast with big differences. I like to think we're a big podcast with small differences. Mm, I think a big podcast (laughs) with big differences? Possibly today, given what we're talking about. So... Can I tell you? So we're talking about Ant Man. Yes, the Ant Man and the Wasp and Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. So, can I tell you my travail of trying to see the movie? Sure. So on Saturday morning, mm-hmm. Vicky and I said, "Let's go see Ant Man and the Wasp." Yeah, you texted Saturday morning. Quantum I'm off to go see the movie at we're some point, going like to see the movie. eleven or something. So we got there. The parking lot was packed, and I'm like, "Okay, what else is showing? Because yeah. it can't possibly be Ant Man." No, it's Ant Man. And like, every every screening was like it was. Full, so the best seat we could get was a seat up front. Oh, and we were like, I, Okay, I am not sitting up front, yeah, that's not to good. watch Ant Man, right? So we we left, oh, did not watch the movie. The next day, Vicky went to visit Hope, and so Sunday morning, I went that's right, it was Sunday morning when you Sunday went. morning, I went a little bit earlier. So I, I, I roll up, it's about 10 30 or so. I walk up to the cashier, and she says, Can I help you? And I say, I want to see the Ant Man movie, but I want the cheapest ticket you can sell me. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not, there is no way I'm paying for XD, okay, or 3D. Like Marvel needs to earn that back. Mm. Like I'm, I, I want the base level. I saw so she it, says, I saw it in XD both times. You saw it twice. I saw it twice. You are insane. You are. <laughs> Theater was packed the second time. Yeah, it, Americans have no taste. So <laughs> such a good movie. So she says, "Well, there's a movie now." Then I had to wait like 40 minutes. And I, I had a feeling I might not like Ant Man. We'll see if I did or not. Mm-hmm. But I had a feeling I might not. <laughs> and so she said, "There's one that just started." So I, I got in late to the trailers, but the okay. trailers that I caught mm-hmm. all set up my experience perfectly. Okay. In the following way, the first trailer I saw was the new "quote unquote" Dungeons and Dragons trailer. Oh yeah, which is exactly the same as you, the old one with you, new pictures. You are so excited like, for that movie, right? Well. Wait. I think but we have to talk about that movie. The trailer is exactly the same. Yeah, it's largely. It's much... Yeah. And yet it still seems slightly more original than the Ant-Man movie that followed it. That's No, that's wrong. <laughs> then, then they subjected me... Have you, have you seen the trailer for Air? The for Air. Ben Affleck-directed... Oh, God, yes. Matt Damon I saw Nike that. Movie? No, I saw that during the Super Bowl, and I yeah. assumed it was a satire. Right. And then I keep yes. seeing it, and I'm like, this yes. thing is real? You're watching the... Like, it looks so like a bad Saturday it, Night Live skit. Right, it pops up. And now, so now I have to go to the movies mm-hmm. and root for that plucky underdog Nike? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, that, the entire trailer is pitched like, look at these underdogs yeah, who no, come out of nowhere. I can't, yeah, I it's it, just, it seems like it's actually... It should, it should be the uh, weird equivalent of, like, these historical, like, yes, movies. Cause, that, but it's apparently, apparently done totally straight. Yeah, no, I like, it, it's it's dead straight. It would be like going in the 1890s to yeah. a movie about the robber barons, like, yeah. where you're supposed to cheer for the robber yeah, barons. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, I, yeah, I don't understand how that's a movie. You know what? I can't wait for the sequel, too. Or the sequel. This is going to be Air 2, The Sweatshop Years. <laughs> I think they were always the sweatshop Because that's what they're building. Well, apparently it's just the one guy, Mm. you know, who meets another guy. So anyway, ugh. So then, not really setting the tone for Mm -hmm. me. But then I saw the Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Okay. It actually looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think the vibes are pretty good. I mean, again... James Gunn is very good at trailers. He's yeah. very good at music, and and like the the music in that yeah. trailer is what really works it. We but it's got like the Gamora Star Lord, you know, kind of dynamic is back. Mm-hmm. I I thought this might be okay, mm-hmm. and then I thought to myself, how do I have any optimism left? I don't for it's the MCU. Of Ant-Man. Like, shall we talk about Ant Man, <laughs> the Wasp, Quantum Mania, Quantum Mania, Quantum Mania. Yes. So, so so we kind of talked about maybe talking about the good stuff. Sure. Yeah. And then some of the bad stuff. Yeah. And then I have a list of debates for you. I well, I have oh, I ha- I have a bunch of stuff to talk about too. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll fit it into. I'm not sure if it fits into your debates or not, as we talked about. Oh, okay. Good enough. So. Well, if if it's in indigeneity, yes, it's in the debates. Go oh, good because I have yeah. a lot of stuff on that. I I don't want to spoil it for you. Mm-hmm. But it really made me angry mm-hmm. that a film as empty and vacuous as this mm-hmm. wanted me to think about anything. <laughs> it's like it's it, it just that I had to keep thinking about it just profoundly angered me. Mm. Like it just this was not my best experience. Okay, with the MCU. Okay, but you loved it. I okay. <laughs> 
yeah. on the level of just kind of a purely entertaining blockbuster sort of film. Yes. It was probably the most fun I've had since Spider-Man No Way Home. What about before Spider-Man No Way Home? How far back do you have to go outside of the Spider-Man franchise? See, I think this will work for you. Yeah. Because for me, and I think you'll probably say much the same. Yeah. For very different reasons. Mm-hmm. This reminds me a lot of Age of Ultron. <laughs> but that means very yeah. different things for you and I. Right. It means we will be exchanging punches before, <laughs> before this hour is done. We've never exchanged punches over no, Age it's of true. Ultron. It's true. So yeah, I, I, just, I just as a kind of mindless blockbuster Ooh, stop. entertainment. Mindless? I just, totally I, with you. I, it was, I, it was just a, a, a fun sci-fi nope. adventure kind of romp. That I enjoyed. You think this was a romp? Very rompy. There was not a. There was I enjoyed not. It. There was not two minutes of romp in this. Oh yeah, there's there was no romp. By yeah. the end of it, I was literally muttering out loud, "Just good God, can you end this thing?" It wasn't even that long of a movie. Oh my, it felt like it was. Oh forever. no, it flew by. How long was it? It was at least two hours, right? It's, it's just a little over two hours. Because I, I went long. to the. Oh, no, it needed to be, too... It needed to be longer, actually. That's one of my critiques. <laughs> so, more. so the bad part is they give you enough. Yeah, I don't think I don't think normally when we disagree, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of common ground mm-hmm. from which we can begin. Yes, I don't know what we're going to talk about because I feel as no, if, no, I have a, I have I feel a feeling as if we have nothing shared in the well, no, because I will experience. one of one now again one of the issues that I will recognize in the film, yeah, is that and this is one of my critiques is is. It, it, it kind of – another way it reminds me of No Way Home is that, you know, okay. when I saw No Way Home and, you know, like when Dr. Octopus shows up and we're like, you know, five minutes into the film, I'm like, oh, okay, we're just dispensing with like any pretense of like establishing stuff. We're just getting right. straight to the wackiness. Right. Same thing here. Like we get that five-minute like montage of like Scott's life and then what? we're into the quantum realm. I'm like, I okay, don't... so we're just kind of dispensing See, with – but they but... need it for some of the moments they wanted later. right. They needed to do more because, for example, like at the end Was when it? when Scott and Hope like say, I love you, I love you too. Yeah. Like that – I'm just like that didn't have any power to it because the film – number one, they're separate for most of the film. Right. But even at the beginning, we don't really see them as a couple very much because it's all that montage stuff. They, yeah. they really needed to do more – at the beginning to kind of establish where everyone was, but it right. just it moves to the, it moves past that too quickly because they want to get to which adventures are, in the quantum realm. Which one's hope? That's the wasp. Okay, all right. I, I would hope for a better hope on yeah. screen. Yeah. So you want to start with the good because you're already criticizing. Oh yeah, no, I mean that that that, that was yeah. So that was well, I mean again, most I've enjoyed an MC movie since Spider Man No Way Home. It's the first one I've seen more than once in a theater since. No Way Home and probably Multiverse see, of Madness. You said you were going to see it again, and I thought you were just were you had to be kidding. No, no. You paid XD money twice. Well, keep in mind I have like seventeen free tickets, so I paid two dollars and seventy five cents for the films. Okay, Each. you paid two dollars and seventy five cents for the films. How much did you pay? More than I wanted to. Yeah, exactly. It was probably eight bucks. You I paid. Guess. You paid yeah. almost twice, over right. twice what I. So did. let's talk about what was good in it. Yes. What would I you feel like, like to... you're going to be disappointed. I don't think I will. In the thinness of my list. I don't think so. Number one. You imagine that I, I had any other illusion that I, you would watch this I, and, and I, enjoy I, it? I really liked that they used the theme song from Welcome Back, Cotter. That was good. That I was a loved quality it. bit. Yep. You know, like you've got a little Horseshack in you. Yeah, okay. I could. Uh, no? That's not, again, that's not a complimentary It comparison. is. Horseshack was like the breakout star. Well, Travolta, I guess, was. Yeah, was, yeah but, but, but Horseshack was but not everybody a breakout knew Horshack, for, Not you know? for good reasons. Really? Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, I you know me. I love a good TV theme song. Mm-hmm. I thought that using it front and back worked pretty nicely. Yeah. So big win for Ant Man. Excellent. They used Welcome Back Cotter's theme song. Excellent. That's one. That's one. You want to hear my second one? Oh sure. That was Rama Tut at the end, right? Yes. I actually caught it. Like I actually caught an Easter egg. Like he came across I'm like, is that Rama Tut? Pretty. That's that. That's a pretty low hanging fruit when it comes to Easter eggs. For you. For most people. Really? Zach, do you know who Ramatut is? Yeah. Zach does. But yes, that he's is. He's not that, speaking that, up, but that, he's clearly shaking You know that the head. other guy was Immortus, right? But with the big hat. No. And that was Immortus. No. So um, I was really I was really proud of myself. Okay. Because I caught Ramatut. So, so far, your yeah. likes about the film are yes. at least 50% about you. Probably 60 or 70%, <laughs> honestly. Okay, finally. And this is the last thing I got on my list. Oh, come on. Of things I liked. <laughs> no, I swear to God. But it's a little bit longer. 
I thought there was actually some pretty solid acting okay. going on. Like there, there were several performances that I actually enjoyed. Such as? Okay, Paul Rudd. Okay. He still has the charm. He does. And that charm can kind of carry a movie mm-hmm. a little bit further than the movie probably deserves to be carried sometimes. Yeah. So I thought that was good. I, at the end, like his his optimism that he had saved the world dissolving to this pessimism that, oh, yeah, but Kang said if mm-hmm. he didn't get out, it would get worse. Mm-hmm. And then going back to, ah, you know, he's going to force the optimism. Mm-hmm. I thought that was good. Okay. I think Jonathan Majors is a serious talent. Oh, yeah. Like, he's he's Oh, Majors is really... That, that, pretty, everyone who has... Yeah. Even the critics that have savaged the film all yeah. say that Majors... He's, he's so good. He's a super talented actor. Yeah. I feel like... He was great in Lovecraft Country, too. I haven't seen that. And I got to get HBO. You yeah. want to share your password with me? No, but I have it on Blu-ray. Oh, do you? I do. I might actually watch that if Not you gave it to Vicky. me. Not for Vicky. No, understood. <laughs> understood. Very clear. So, he's really talented. I felt mm-hmm. like... The script might have let him down sometimes. Mm. I think there, that he might do more with Kang yeah. than than what was done. See, I really liked his Kang. Yeah. I did not care as much for his Immortus or his Ramatut. He seemed to be trying too hard to like make them different. Oh, I didn't really think about it. I was just yeah, so they, excited they to felt, see Ramatut they, there. But, you know, they that felt, I, maybe they felt I lost that, my that, that, I did not care for that. But yeah, his, I thought his Kang was excellent. I mean, I, Jonathan Majors is, yeah, he is. Well, I thought he was excellent. Yeah. I thought his Kang was a little thin. Well, I mean, his Kang is sort of the baseline Kang. Like, there's nothing... Re- right. Like, his Kang is, like, the standard. He's the Kang who conquers he's people. He's a conqueror. That's, what that's, he, literally, that's what my literally what he does. That's like, what I said. My notes are, yes, he's a conqueror. Yeah, what else? Like, like, to like, be fair, like, they, Kang is is a little bit one note, and that's basically what he yeah, does. So, the, yeah, yeah there's, not, there's not a ton to it, but... And I didn't realize that Majors was going to go fight Creed. Yeah. But it makes me kind of want to see that movie. Yeah. Because I think, like, Jonathan Majors is... Really he is, yeah. I mean, like, it's and I, I was not familiar with him before Lovecraft Country, yeah. and since Lovecraft Country, like he has taken off because there, there's yeah. a couple other things he's been in recently. That yeah, he's he is a he is an amazing actor. He was terrific in Loki. He's great. He was great. Yeah, he's I mean, and he was he was really good in this. I wish Marvel were giving him a little bit more to work with because I think he's I, I, again he's super. Well, talented he stayed around guy. for the second post credit scene, right? Which one was the second? That was one? The, that was the Loki season two. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, because you know what I need for Marvel? Mm-hmm. More teasers for the next thing coming. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's just like I feel like a punching bag, and Creed is just going pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. Except Marvel was the one punching. Yeah, no, I, under, I understood face. the metaphor. Okay, so Catherine Newton wasn't mm-hmm. too bad. Okay. <laughs> okay I, thought she, I thought I thought she was pretty good, and yeah. her performance as you know, kind of a young Avenger got me thinking. I might actually be interested in a Young Avengers or an A-Force movie. Yeah, it's sad because I think they just yeah. came out and said that they're not really planning to do Young Avengers. Uh, well, I don't, well, how about A-Force? I don't know. I, I, they haven't said anything about that. I mean, we're, between, getting kind, we're kind of getting a version of that with the Marvels since it's going to have all three Captain Marvels. Right, but, but between, like, Kate Bishop, yeah. you know, and Young Ant Woman or whatever her name is. I mean, her comic book code name is Stature, which is probably one of the worst code names. Yeah, okay. yeah. And Stature. Yeah. And Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. You've got like kind of a young A Force vibe yeah. kind of developing. I would love to see that happen. Um, but if it's not happening, I guess I can cross that off. Well, my no, young, they've, said young, they've said young Avengers is not yeah. necessarily. Well, Catherine Newton should be back. I could see, I could yeah. see her being part of a future build out of the Avengers mm. that would be better than Evangeline Lilly. Yeah. Yeah. No, her. I mean, again, I. It, I yes. In this, I it, the it's another one of my issues with the film is that it's called Ant Man and the Wasp, and yeah. she's at best in the B plot for most of the film. Like the, it does not feel like she quite has the equal billing. It's a little misadvertised. in the film. Like it, it's very much Ant Man three. It's not really Ant Man and the Wasp two. Right, right. I think that's true because they really should have had they really should have had her with Scott. Yeah, for the movie because then we might have seen more of their relationship, and and right. then the. I love you bit at the end would have paid off more or yeah. when she comes out of the portal to, to, to you know, oh, theoretically stay yeah. with Scott and, and takes Such out a... King. Like, that would have been a bigger deal. Like oh, it, Just that scene that never ended. It, just, it reminded oh, me, again, the other thing the it reminded movie. me of in a lot of ways was, was kind of some of the moments I talked about when we did Thor Ragnarok and that there were moments like the death of Odin that didn't really have the space to have yeah. the significance they should have. That there were There were moments in... This film as well that I was like, oh, that could have been, right? That could have been even more. And somehow they didn't manage it in a film that just wouldn't end. One of my favorite reviews on Google had this to say mm. at the end: 
Towards the end of the movie, Kang speaks not just to Ant-Man, but to all of us when he says, quote, I just want you to remember that you could have gone home. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought that, that was a pretty well-turned. That is good. Yes, a pretty well-turned that, critique. That, yes, that, is, that is clever. We could have gone home, and yet <laughs> I sat to the bloody end of this thing. It's, it's good. That you, the, the podcast appreciates your dedication. So it's hard for me, and normally I can divorce actor from person, yeah. like from the screen in the real world. But her anti-vax activism yeah. is – it makes me a little uncomfortable. I don't know if you, if you saw the, the quote she gave to Fox. I, no, I don't know if I did. Is this a recent quote or is this the – I don't remember. It, okay. it, so she wrote – she said, um, I know the beast that I am attacking. Hmm. She, said, she told Esquire in an interview. Oh, okay. It was published and then repeated on Fox. Gotcha. Here's what she was thinking before she posted on Instagram. Quote, I know that I have a little pebble and that there's this, the, and that there's this effing – Goliath giant. Mm. And I just think Goliath giant is such a stupid turn of phrase. Well, it's redundant because Goliath right. is a giant. It's, I'm going to come back to that later. That's why That's yeah. why Hank Pym never used the code name giant Goliath, Goliath man. Right, yeah. No, he I was just agree. giant yeah. man or Goliath because like otherwise really it's really big Goliath giant man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, so anyway. But I just I'm having a hard time rooting for that plucky actress standing up against the machine. Yeah, well, and I, and I, I you know, I, yeah. I, you know me. I love me some Janet Van Dyne in the comics. The wasp that that the arrow when wasp was that? the the arrow the arrow when wasp was chairwoman of the Avengers. That. You're just going to keep was, punching ahead. She's my, one of my favorite characters in Avengers. When she was that's a better phrase. The the, the, yeah. the era in which she was the chairperson of the Avengers is kind of when I got into comics and okay. and at first it seemed like they were going that route and and now it yeah, yeah. I, this this film did not do as much as I would have liked with her character. Yeah, it didn't do well. I was going to say it didn't do much with her character. Yeah. But I think you could argue that about almost everybody on the screen, except for maybe the slug horses that were really developed. The slug horses at the very beginning when Michelle Pfeiffer is like farming in the oh in the oh you mean the evil like things that were attacking when her? Kang comes no like there's like she's got some slug horses oh the on ones her that oh gotcha whatever. yes the ones that pull yeah. the ones that pull the ship gotcha you know how lucky in the massive quantum verse mm-hmm. that just as she was about to die Kang showed up and shot that thing in the head. Well, yeah. I mean, again, if you yeah, it was quite I mean, a again, coincidence. If and, if you're going to take issue with coincidence in like sci-fi or fantasy adventures, oh, I'm going then, to. Then you're going to have issues with a lot of. Well, films, it could be friend. that I just really don't like this film. Yeah, so I've got some other good though. Well, that's good because I am down to the we, debatable at okay. this point. So I did like some of the callbacks to earlier films, like when when all of the Scott clones are pushing him up. Mm-hmm. That's that references when the ants push him up towards the valve in the first movie. He's trying to break into the lab, so, I so like, this is so I like the little. This callback. is the art that really I really like. Really I like that. To you is they have no new ideas. They're three movies in. And they're no, like, they're oh, just. What are we going to do just here? An, I just enjoyed the echo. You know, we need are more Baskin Robbins references. Did you know that he worked for Baskin Robbins? I did. I'm aware oh, of that. Oh, for yes. God's sake! It's just. Yeah. And why would he show up there? How did that guy get in? The, I go on. Okay. Like you, I did like the ending with Scott, wondering if he got everyone killed, then thinking it would be okay. Yeah. And then when he eats the cake and it's bad, it's kind yeah. of like signaling, like, no, it, things are going to be right. bad. Yeah. Like, you messed up. Right. Which is very Scott. Well, but that he and the Wasp could defeat Kang makes me not worried about Kang in the To future. be fair, it's him and the Wasp and a giant army of technologically advanced mutant ants. Yes, ants. It, so, it, well, I, I, I stand corrected. There's, there's he was super, defeated by ants. Now, to be so, fair, so, no, he, he was, wasn't no, even entirely was, defeated by them. Right. He was defeated by ants. So, I, so. like, yeah. I should take him more see, seriously. But see, this now listen, Marvel you, needs to listen to me now. Because here's the best. So then when this Kang comes back, because clearly this Kang is coming back, he's going to come back. Yeah. And someone's suit? someone's going to underestimate him because they say, "Yeah, you were beaten by Ant Man and a bunch of ants," and then he's going to kill whoever says that, like just cold dead, and prove that he is not did, to be messed the with. The things we have to look forward to. Yeah, like I like Marvel should hire me to like they, you know they can you know pay he, me like you know what he ought to kill twenty grand and, and he ought to kill he, the they, franchise. They can have that story beat. Uh, That's what he ought to do. I did enjoy the twist on Modok. Though I will admit the CGI was a tetch bit dodgy on him. It was uncomfortable. In that he it never, he always looked like a face on a screen and never a giant floating head. Well, there was no dimension. Yeah. Maybe if I had sprung for the 3D, his nose would have like Yeah, it, well, I can tell you in, but... in XD it was not. I was like, yeah, that yeah. that's where. And there's actually, there was actually a report in Vulture today that apparently some of the, the CGI people on, on Ant-Man have come out and said, well, one of the reasons that 
it was so dodgy is they actually took some of the resources away and put them towards uh, Wakanda forever. Well, that paid and off. So, and so they had to take a lot of shortcuts. Got um, well, I've got two MODOKs in my debatables. Oh, excellent. We can go through your positives and, first, then, and then we'll come to the MODOKs. The other thing, and again, Marvel, yeah. call me up. Because I can see how this film... I think they might call me, too. Um, in an odd way, would allow us to actually do the Planet Hulk storyline that everyone wants. Because we got sort of a version... Define ver- everyone. Okay, everyone but you. <laughs> that, that, well, because yeah, we got like a little bit of it in Thor Ragnarok. Right. But not, not the full right. extent. No. But see, here's the thing. The, a What's very the thing? early storyline in Hulk... Yeah. Um, ...is he gets sent down to the microverse... And he falls in love with this woman called Jarella, who I think she's actually Gentara's aunt. I Does think she in have the a comics. mohawk? No, that's the one from from Planet Hulk. Okay, all right. Uh, but you can basically do like the Planet Hulk storyline, yeah. But have Hulk go into the microverse, and we meet Jarella, oh, and he please? falls in love, and then we do that whole storyline. So that's how Marvel can do its Planet Hulk yeah. storyline that they want to do, but they you know they've already used Scar and do things like that. Do they want to do it? I think so. It, it it's the one that well fans have been have been like, ooh, we want a full Planet Hulk storyline, not yeah. just the little bit that we've got. I'm like, do do the storyline because it's spun out of Avengers number eighty eight into a Hulk well, we issue. All, we all know where that. they go I into mean, the microverse. I, here's the thing I can't take anymore on this podcast. You saying obvious things like it's spun out of Avengers eighty eight. We all eight. right, Zach, we all know that. The summons of Cyclops like, is we, the title of that issue. Yeah, now keep condescending to me like I don't know anything about Cyclops comic spelled P S Y K L K L O P. All right. So you have more good? Uh, no, that's everything I specifically had as good. All right, the debatable. Do oh, you I have ha- a bleeper? I had, I had bad. What? No. I can use you didn't do any bad? Oh, I... I, thought you I may bad. have a few pages of bad. Oh, okay. You wanna, but you were talking about MODOK. Okay. And I have a couple debatables. Excellent. Let's talk MODOK. But it involves, like, a word that MODOK uses at the end. Oh, okay. Do you know the word I'm talking about? I believe about? I do, yes. Where he says, Darren is not a... Richard. Th- Perfect. Debate. Uh, Darren is not a Richard. Uh, perhaps in that moment, but for the vast majority of his life, he is Generally, a total he's a Richard. Big Richard, he's right? Like huge he's, Richard. Yeah, huge flaming Richard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just so we're clear. Yeah. Um, debate number two. Mm-hmm. Do we need Modoc? Debate. Mm. See, you've answered the question already, haven't you? Do we need him? Probably not. I enjoyed. I enjoyed having a version of Modoc. But okay. But yeah. Okay. Debate number three. Okay. The mid credit scene is racist. Debate. Oh. Wait. Okay, can you explain? Where all the Kangs are kind of like jumping up and down and saying ook, ook, ook. Oh, were they saying... I just thought they were generally screaming. They were. Well, and they were generally, generally screaming, screaming and kind of, of like... Yeah. I could, yeah, I could see where you might get that. So maybe, <laughs> yeah, on the, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's other issues with race in the film that I could that I think are much more. Yeah, I think taken out of context, that that moment might look even worse than it. Yeah, like if you just put it up on Twitter and people hadn't seen the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got one more. Okay, Indigenous people. Yes, debate. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't know it's what the notes say. Okay. You want to talk about indigenous people? I do. I've now opened that door. Yes. So there's a lot. Well, it, both you indigenous are... people, colonialist tropes, white savior, sort of ideas is, of the frontier. Did like, I mention already, this is what really most pissed me off about this movie. And I so. knew I had to talk about this. And it's not a movie that deserves to create a conversation. Well, see, here's the... It's such a dumb, empty, vacuous movie. Well, yes, but also... <laughs> Yeah, go, please. So, I want to give, I will give the movie one tiny bit of credit. There's a lot that oh, it tiny. does. Was that a pun? No, it actually wasn't. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things that it does in terms of colonialist tropes and things like that that, that, that are not good. The one thing that it does, I, and, and most of it is because I don't think they're really clued in. Right. They I do, agree. they do, there's one moment where they do try, and it's when Krylar first shows up. Mm-hmm. And he walks in, and, and Janet hasn't seen him for a long time. Right. And he's like, I'm now Lord Krylar. And I'm like, yeah. you realize the only way he is that is if he's completely sold out to Kang. Right. And so the idea of him, the way in which that he's sort of of the revolutionary, but then eventually sort of flips over and, yeah. and you know, when it becomes convenient to have power, he's he's all about having yeah. the power. And we see so, him like being very cursory to the waiters and, and you know, yeah. eating. Like, I was like, okay, Krylar is... Like the film may be trying to do yeah. a little bit consciously with kind of colonialist tropes and I think 
and and imper- and and kind of a critique of, yeah. of what power does. And I think that's totally fair. If I mentioned we should do reservation dogs and yeah. have girls on this show, Possibly, this is the, yes. this is the hot time to talk about colonialism. Yes, to or me, or yeah. we could just talk about Ant Man. That's true. <laughs> to me, um, that moment. I mean, this is like the Dairy Girls of the MCU. <laughs> No way. Sorry. No, no, it's no, the no, reservation no. dogs of the MCU. No, no. no. It's, not, <laughs> it's not nearly as good as either. But to me, that Bill Murray moment mm-hmm. could work like you're describing it, but it almost gets like overrun by Bill Murray. To some extent, yeah. Like to me, it was like yeah. it was so obvious that you were – it was like, oh, Bill Murray's here. You know, Bill Murray is here. Mm-hmm. And oh, you know, he's eating funny things like crunchily out of his drink. And it just – it felt so Bill Murray yeah. that it, I felt like it kind of took me out of the movie. No, I could see that. And it just felt like I was watching Bill Murray. But I, yeah. I, I, I don't disagree that the film is trying. Yeah, well, that's... that's well, and, and then beyond just kind of the general, your main villain is called Kang the Conqueror, which is, you know, pretty easy to look at in terms of colonialist tropes. Well, and... All the people that he's conquered are portrayed as "quote unquote" primitive. Well, that that I want to get to that because I yeah. I don't know how much of I, I I don't see that's where I think maybe the creators of the film aren't thinking about as much because I I think so. Bill Murray was where they peaked. Yeah, in their like, th- you know, I, like uh, Bill I Murray. Is, I don't think it's Bill done Murray well. is the one place where I think they are maybe intentionally right digging into some colonialist tropes and and things and like that. And the other time they're just The other times I feel like tropes, they are, yeah right? that they are just replicating them and yeah. and, and then just yeah. beyond the general oh he's Kang he's the conqueror he's the bad guy. Yeah. But on, so that those are the places where they they try to but yeah so th- there's 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 just a lot to talk about um you yeah, know in terms so of the the just I mean yeah the quantum realm people who all represent sort of an indigenous population or the way we imagine indigenous population yeah, that, as Always you already pointed out than, yeah right? as you pointed out you know they're they're massively troped as 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 primitive they're not really able to do anything but run and hide until four white saviors show up they need a plucky teenage girl to show up. Yeah, that was the other you know, thing too. Like, like that. you need to stand up for your. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like Green Lantern and Green Arrow. Yeah, going to talk to the Native Americans way back in the Denny well, O'Neill. Well, I mean, to be like, fair, you need to stand up. To be do, fair, right. it literally is Cassie, who no one in the quantum realm knows, who right. does the holographic message telling them to rebel. I'm like, yeah. no, that should be Gentara. Like, why? Why is Cassie, who no right. one like she that, she literally becomes the spokesman of the revolution? Yeah. And you're like, because. That's how it would work in any world. Like, yeah. oh, there's some teenage girl I don't know saying I ought to, you know, rise up against Kang. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, like yeah. it was it, that was again a very so Not, yeah the very sort of way and and then kind of thinking about like when you re when you look at the number of people from the quantum realm that show up, you know, the, the, their army. Right. It's maybe in in the low hundreds at best. Yeah. And then Kang kills a lot of them. Yeah. Like it's really the white saviors and then this army of giant ants that do the defeat. Like the right. the indigenous population is is sort of marginalized at best. You right. That they're not even really part of their own liberation. Yeah. Their liberation is dependent well, they, upon white people and ants. Well to be yeah, I mean even the part that they do play in their own liberation is very small. Right. Like they right. They're, like they're, at, they're marginalized, the, at, at best they play a very yeah. small role. Because they, they play they're the only ones that play no role in defeating Kang. Right. Like it's 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 Scott, like it's Hope, it's Janet, it's Hank and it's the ants. And if the ants don't show up at the end, oh, they're they're gone. Like we're it's big trouble. Yeah, big trouble. Yeah, big, big trouble. Nice. So, I know you wanted you wanted to talk about indigenous people. Yes, and colonialist tropes. So I did a Google search mm-hmm. for like reviews of the movie. They're with, just starting to percolate. Yeah, with indigenous. Yeah. in them, I got something from the Boston Pilot. Two, okay, two are from like um like Catholic. Okay, um, publications. Boston Pilot, the screenplay tries to make a point about the mistreatment of indigenous people, Mm. though the effort is a rather feeble one. Yeah, that's fair. Next comment. Um, There's too much going on. Like, you have to balance the indigenous population's revolution with a family story with Kang's goals, an oddly placed heist, and the villain's place going forward to the MCU. Mm. So again, like, it's not really dealt with in a serious way. Mm Multiversitycomics.com. his disinterest in the quantum realm's people, uh, the, the people's rebellion renders them unengaging, mm. which is a shame given how cool the characters are on paper. So the, oh, gener- yeah. the general yeah. consensus online was that if there was any effort to talk about mm-hmm. indigenous peoples, 
that it is completely inadequate. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not even I'm not even sure that I would give the show credit for talking about indigenous peoples. I think what happens is that they because I mean they're they're clearly you know, wanting to sort of reference all kinds of, of sci-fi show, you know, Fantastic right. Voyage and all these. Right. They, they, and, and the problem is they fall into all of these very classic sci-fi tropes when it comes to indigenous peoples. I mean, kind of you know, like a Star Trek, like an to, original Star Trek. Star Trek, or even going, back, of the or even going yeah. back to Edgar Rice Burroughs and, and, you know, Princess of Mars and, and things like that, yeah. you know. And, and then you do get a pretty thorough critiquing of them in, in Bradbury's Martian Chronicles, which is about exploration as colonialism and right. imperialism well, but but by and large i think i think the film you know it wants to sort of replicate like star trek star wars fantastic voids like all of these right. great sci-fi works in general yeah. and it but it does so in ways that also replicate some of the yeah. very problematic tropes that that sci-fi has often been based in because in part it's trying to kind of do the harry potter spin-off fantastic beasts kind of stuff yeah where like you want to just see lots of you know, wild, mm -hmm. wacky CGI kind yeah. of created creatures, mm -hmm. which I just, it, I, I have to be honest, like I just don't find entertaining yeah. or engaging, at least as it was done in this movie. Yeah. So that's all I've got for the debatable. I've got yeah. nothing left but complaints. Well, I've got more stuff about indigenous things. Oh, good. Keep going. Well, Keep I, going. but also kind of, th well, number one, we, we talked about. I think we're well past number one at yeah. this point. Well, no, we, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we talked about Cassie. Yes. And one of the things I also found really problematic, and again, it's another one of the things that's very underdeveloped in the in the first part, mm -hmm. where you know we find her in jail. She talks about you know that she's in jail because she was a protest for the homeless people that were rendered homeless by the blip. And I'm like, yeah. okay, this is like how many times are we going to get references to the stuff that kind of the world building stuff that happened because of the blip yeah. that we never actually get to see. Like, I'd like to see some of that stuff. Like, what is... Like, Falcon and the Winter it's, Soldier is the closest we got to, to getting into that. It's almost as if the disadvantaged and the marginalized are used only as plot yeah. devices. Well, that's the thing. It's clearly along, Cassie's right? relationship to the Quantum Realm people is simply meant to be parallel to what she's supposedly doing with, with the homeless. But right. again, it means they're only serving as a metaphor as opposed right. to really... Well, well, we're on that point, too. One of the things that drove me nuts about this movie is the way in which Scott has kind of grown into being a hero, right? Yes. Ant-Man, prior to this movie. And yet, to make this movie work, they have to kind of nudge him back a little bit so he can do it again. I feel mm. like – I feel like it's you – know, do, well, do you hear what I'm saying? Like, well, I feel it, like – it sort of – I mean, it – it's sort of – I mean, I agree with you. It, it depends how you're looking at it because to the world at large around him, yeah. they didn't really see any of that growth in Endgame. But he's, so to the world around right. him, he's still kind of the goofy Ant Man. But dude. he seems to have slipped back, yeah, in some ways. You know, like he's just writing books. Like it seems like he had become a, through his adventures with the well, the Avengers and whatnot, like a much more selfless, altruistic. I think they hinted like, at that in the yeah. Ms. Marvel show about that that Scott was sort of cashing in on his. It's also a product. Again, of, it's also a product of getting rid of Luis and all the other supporting characters because right. he was working with them on their security consultancy. Right. But you, you have to do that just to make the story work. Yeah, because otherwise, like you don't need Cassie to kind of pull him back along. Yeah. Well, the other thing too that I found interesting about that journey. is I was really surprised because prior to the film and in the early parts of the film, where they're really emphasizing like how much time Scott had lost with Cassie and that yeah. their relation. I thought the whole point was going to be Kang is going to tempt him with. I will take you back, right. and you can have the time with Cassie. Kang's offer wasn't really that good when you think about no, it. No, Kang's offer like kind of sucked. Like, like, stuff Kang could offer, like, Kang was like, I'm going to give you the bare minimum. Yeah, like the, yeah. I, I would have liked, I think that would have given more complexity to Kang, because it's basically the same offer he makes to Janet. Although I guess he does offer not to, to he does offer to spare Scott's timeline, right? Well, he or offers to spare Janet's timeline. I don't remember if he made the oh. same offer to Scott. He makes oh, that offer maybe to Janet. So. I might be confused. He tells Janet, I won't destroy I, yours. I may have dozed off. Yeah. At some point. Okay, the comment to Janet was in the opening scene of the movie. <laughs> Did you chance. doze off within the first five minutes? <laughs> There's a chance. That is a low attention span. There's a chance. All right, give me some more um, indigenous people. Well, not so much, oh. not, but sort of moving into, it got me kind of thinking about the Ant-Man franchise as a whole. Okay. And the way in which the quantum realm has sort of developed. And, and see if you can figure out where I'm going with this. Okay. So in the first Ant-Man film, mm -hmm. we don't spend a lot of time in the quantum realm. It's this sort of, of undefined, strange place okay. that by and large going into it is dangerous and you don't want to spend as much time there. 
Ah. Then in the second movie, yeah. we go there, and it's still kind of dangerous, mm-hmm. but we also find out that there's this resource that we can use from it, which is gold, by the way, in the way they CGI it. And then at the end of the movie, they're going into the quantum realm to sort of gather these resources. You don't think that the makers of Ant-Man meant this? No. This no, is no, no. a subconscious revelation of who Americans are. Oh, yeah. Well, who Americans are. And, and, and the quantum realm is right. basically the frontier. Because then in this film, right. now we find out, oh, there's all kinds of people here that we just pretended right. weren't here. Right. And we yeah. don't really, even though now that we know they're here, we don't really care about I them. really like that reading, but I like it. Largely because it supports my hatred for this movie. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. because it's a movie that might have thought about the frontier. I don't think it is. And it, No, but in the making of it. Yeah. Like somebody could say, I want to make a superhero movie that really kind of interrogates mm-hmm. the frontier. Yeah. And kind of, in like, you know, interior, mm-hmm. like colonialism and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. But instead, they're just kind of reflecting mm-hmm. a um, an American identity. Right. That they haven't questioned. But. You're going to turn this to good? For you, yes. Oh, good. Because Excellent. you good. like to tear apart American identity. Right. And therefore, you should love these films because they give you the opportunity to do so. Okay. That, yes. I think that we can look at this and say this is, this is solid ground. Yeah. But it wasn't something I realized. It wasn't. I, Americans understand I didn't really realize this from the first two films. But yeah. the, this film really made me kind of realize, like, oh, yeah, the quantum so realm this, is kind of functioning as a frontier. It just doesn't feel like a romp, right? You call this a romp see, at the beginning. And see, now again. It's like a romp through the worst crimes of our historical again, experience. If on it's the, not a romp. It's a romp to the extent that if I just shut that part of my mind <laughs> off and just enjoy it on kind of a mindless, <laughs> yes. visceral, this was really entertaining. The only way to watch this film is mindlessly. And and that yeah, if 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 I think about it too much, there are I mean again, yeah, there 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 <laughs> there are a number of issues with this film in terms of indigenous representation, color. I, I haven't even gotten into uh what was the character's name? Oh, Veb. Which one's Veb? He's the translator. The translator. The, ooze. the, the guy made of goo? Yes. Yeah. That that as a as uh representing sort of colonial subjects and how they they want to identify with their oppressors right. and he then when holes. and then when they do get do identify they become dangerous. Oh, he becomes a monster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, I could do yeah. a whole paper just on Vib. I'll, the number of papers I could write on this film yes. is actually none of which would be good, right? None of which would be My papers would be excellent. No, no, your papers would be good. None of them would be <laughs> reflecting well on the film. Yeah, no. I, well, if I, if I want to give the film... So besides the to, political to, atrocity, to give, you found it to be a romp. To give the film the benefit of the doubt... <laughs> yeah. My critiques are really born out of the film's ignorance in that... Well, who can... The, the who film can is sort ignorance, of... It's sort you know. of... Ig- you know, because it's it's based itself in a lot of tropes that are based on kind of these horrible things, they end up replicating the horrible things. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Well, it's good for an academic paper writer. It is. Oh, yeah. I think it's a sad. It, it, but it yeah, just, it is. It, there, there, it there's a lot. Makes me yeah. like the film less. I thought you You're might. Yeah. Kind of talking to me. Like, I can't believe you. I'm. It. I'm shocked you didn't actually like really. Well, I I thought about it, but okay. I again like I just did. This movie made me think. Made me angry. Because <laughs> there's no there's there's like a movie ought to engage you and make you you think. Mm. And this movie. I, I mean, it made me think. It made me think about all the papers I could write. Well, no, that's true, but mostly you said you turned your mind off and it was a romp. Yeah. Right? Because you don't find colonialism a romp. No. You no. don't find othering indigenous people a romp. No, no, but I was able to but shut that. I don't that, find white I, I shut, a romp. I was for about two hours twice able to shut that part of my mind off. I can't believe you did it a second time. I did. I, I, I you know, again. So except for the politics. Except for the politics of the film and, and some, <laughs> some dodgy uh, narrative construction. And some CGI. And, and some, yeah, some, some dodgy CGI. Otherwise, it was a really good really film. Good. All right, can we move to the bad then? Yeah, sure. All right, I've got a list for you. Okay. That's not that long, actually. I, don't think, uh, I think I might have gone through most of my bad already. So here's my observation. Mm-hmm. As the MCU, like the universe itself, yes. gets bigger and bigger, Yes. The films feel smaller and smaller to me. Mm. This just felt like it, like for a film that had such a vast universe to play with, mm-hmm. it felt like a really small film. And that's not an Ant Man joke. Right. I just I didn't find it to be a gripping film. Like, what are the stakes in this movie? To oh, me, well, I mean the the quantum realm. Well, Kane could escape from the quantum realm and destroy all the timelines. I, I did, but I didn't feel it. Like I didn't I didn't feel any stake. Mm. In that story, it felt like a film that was treading water. 
It felt like a film that was stuck mm. between Loki 1 and Loki 2, which, mm. by the way, what are those two doing? Treading water until we get to the big Kang story oh, but that's on like, the big screen. It's like nine movies away. I know. But that's – like that's like we've been saying. That's a lot of treading water. It is. I it's, just and to I, me, I, it felt I like think treading of it, water. See, here's – I'm thinking of it. It's like, you know what? Thanos showed up in Guardians 1. And right. then he didn't show up really again until Infinity War and stuff, except for a couple – How did he show up in Guardians 1? You do realize he's the one that Ronan was working for the whole time and that he's in his floating chair. Yeah. Yelling at Ronan. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't do much. He sits in right. his chair. Right. So, okay. I mean, I, Thanos, Thanos doesn't do much. He basically works through intermediaries the whole time. Right. right. Until until Infinity War. And even right. then, he's still got Look, his henchmen. I, it, all the same. I just – I. The movie didn't feel big or grand, mm. and it didn't feel engaging to me. Like, mm. there was never a moment where I felt, like, really gripped by the movie. Okay. See, I did. Okay. Um, I just didn't feel the stakes. Yeah. I have a now, whole bunch. That's because you hate the multiverse, and thus there are no stakes in a film based on the multiverse. I do hate the multiverse. Yes. There's like, no doubt about that. Impossible. I also hate time travel. Has yeah. this been established? So if yeah. you're going to take the two and you're going to mash them together <laughs> into one movie? Listen. Kang has three things. He conquers, he time travels, and he multiverses. <laughs> right. He, yeah. Yeah, he's like... He's not my he's, guy. He's the Neapolitan ice cream of things you hate. So there are yeah. there are a bunch of things that bugged me about this movie, but Excellent. I'm assuming that you can explain them Oh, away I was really hoping for questions. As part of your patented comic book science explained. Yes. Like, we do these segments periodically I where I say, how could this possibly happen? Exactly. And then you explain it. Exactly. Boom. All right. Here we go. So when our heroes are pulled initially into the quantum verse, yes, Scott has to embiggen himself to protect Cassie in the landing. Yes, right. There's this huge crashing thud as they mm-hmm. land on the ground. Correct. Um, how did everybody else survive? Oh, see, there's the moment where Hank says we all should have died, mm-hmm. and then they didn't. Okay, and so that's as far as the film goes in explaining that point. So, but I need your explanation. What's your no prize? Oh well, clearly, well they this? clearly landed in because you say flowers or something. I swear to God, I'm going to throw this pen at you. I'm not going to say flowers. I was just going to say softer terrain. Because <laughs> when Scott lands, it's a very rocky area that yeah. he's on, and they're all in an area filled yeah. with like quantum plants and things. So it was yeah. clearly softer. I don't, I don't buy it. Question number two. Uh huh. I want you to talk to me about how you breathe in the the microverse, like in this quantum verse, mm. because clearly you're smaller than oxygen. Well, but the oxygen in the quantum verse is also smaller. Oh, okay. So, so it's smaller oxygen. That's Smoxygen. how it works. Smoxygen. 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 Hashtag Smoxygen. You did better than I thought you would with that one. Thank you. Um, Kang like has blasts that kill everybody they hit. Pretty much, except for the heroes. Does he ever actually blast? He them? does. I was trying to remember if he yep. ever actually does. Because yeah, I mean, it obliterates. I was trying to remember right. after my second. People viewing. are literally disintegrating. Yeah, and I'm like, did he ever actually blast any no, of them just directly? Stun- I don't just know. Just stuns if he does. the heroes. Pretty sure he does. Does he? I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't remember if he ever actually like. Well, because number he's got the blast that he shoots out of his hands kill everyone. Yeah. The big like circular blast I think is more of like a concussion that just knocks them flat. And I don't think he ever uses the Where hand does blast. Where does blast power come from? From his suit. He's got. He's basically like Doctor Doom. He's got a suit that does okay. does all the stuff. It's yeah. like a. The, that, that's why. Did they explain that at some point in Loki? No, but Janet says when he got his suit back, that's what once he gets his technology back, which is mainly the chair and the suit. Right. That's what allows him to conquer because his suit is all like super. Otherwise, he's just billions, a billions of years okay. technology advanced. So, so uh, I've got some timing questions. Okay. So there's this moment where um, they're being dragged off by the indigenous people, Scott and Cassie are. Yes. You mean where they're chanting, not at all primitively. Right. Yes, and they need to have the goo. Yes, to drink it. The and they're ooze. being they're being they're the being ooze. led to the ceremony together. Uh, no, Cassie disappeared at some point so that she could have the ooze separately, and then tells him to drink it. Uh huh. And then he doesn't want to drink it. No. Well, would you want to drink the ooze? He just said. She said, "Drink the goo." Yeah, but so you think if your daughter said, "Drink the goop," mm. you drink the goop. But anyway, but maybe she's being controlled. They're by then the holding ooze. his arms right yes. to prevent him from getting away. Mm-hmm. At every other point in the film, when he's threatened by something he doesn't want to have happen to him, mm-hmm. he grows very small mm. or he grows very big. Mm. But here he decides just to struggle at his own regular size. Mm-hmm. Explain. Uh, well, there, there's so many explanations. Um, Which feels like just temporizing, Scott's right? very bad at his job. But he's not in um, any he, other situation he, he, in the not, film. Well, he's always you know, getting bigger or small. You know, um, he's too consumed with worry for Cassie to think straight. Um, shrinking small and attacking them may cause them to attack Cassie. 
And so he's he's large. A lot of my reasons are going to be he's protecting Cassie. Okay. So you don't have a good answer for That's that. That's a perfectly legit. Now, listen, if you were being held down by primitives and Hope was like on the by other who? side. By primitives. And you and Hope was on the other side. And she told me to drink the goo. I drink the goo. I don't think. Well, number one, setting that aside. I would drink the goo. But would you. But you would can't you, set it aside. It's the context would you, of the scene. Would you shrink and possibly endanger Hope in that way? No, well, of if, course if not. If you think that you're going to be killed by what you're calling primitives. I think well, that what you would do is you would get really big and smash them all with your feet and thus save your daughter who would be killed wow. next. You're just going to smash all the indigenous peoples? That's not cool. Well, you are because you're the one that says they're dangerous. I'm the one that's saying drink the goop. Yeah. Final the question. Goop might be dangerous. When Scott does finally grow big at the end, it's kind of like, you know. Ginormous. Like char- yeah, well, as I think when he finally grows to his Goliath giant size. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's well beyond uh, Goliath size. So, oh no, it's, it's, it's Goliath and then giant Goliath. So mm-hmm. I think this is this Literally, is, Goliath Giant. This okay. is what Evangeline Lilly was talking about. Mm. Goliath Giant. Um, he runs, right? And there's little tiny people all around his feet, but he never steps on anybody. He's very careful that How, way. Okay, A. He's running in a straight line. There's no care whatsoever. Well, okay, again. How come he never squashes anybody? I think he, he never does, steps he, on a single person. Theoretically, he does. I'm sure he does squash people. But he doesn't. But the You only never peop- watch him squash anybody. He's probably squashing, like, that's friendly fire. Like, he's squashing indigenous people that he's leading to well, it, rebellion. Well, number one, it depends. It doesn't depend. Because there's so few indigenous people that, percentage-wise, he's probably stepping on more bad Kang people. So it's okay with you? As long as only 10% indigenous killed? No, no, no. Just, you think no, that's okay? I'm assuming like, they just... Well, number one, I'm, think, like, I'm, what's, I'm what's saying... Your number of, I'm saying... What's your number of indigenous he was people a, dead? He was what's able to... What's the percentage that zero, makes it okay? <laughs> because Scott was able to dodge all of them because there are so few... And just step on all of the king people they who were, look exactly they were the running same. Running around, if you go back and watch the film a third time, you'll see they're just. But they were on around. a whole. They were on a no, whole separate tiny bridge. little creatures all around his feet when he runs. Eh, I don't know if they. But they were. I, I, think, they, I think they were king people. Um, like most MCU well, yeah, films. I'm paying close attention. The man who fell asleep five minutes in. <laughs> I didn't really fall asleep. I, I might have dozed off, but I'm paying um, really close attention. It was just for com- comedic effect. Obviously. I'm sleep awake, man. Clearly comedic effect. Mm. Um, like most MCU films, it this thing it couldn't end. Have they forgotten how to end a film? It just went on, and like I was definitely muttering out loud in the theater, like "You've got to be kidding me!" Yeah, I, 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 I was disappointed by the fact that you know that there's all this sort of buildup of like, "Oh gosh, Hope sacrificed herself. She and yeah. Scott could be trapped in the quantum realm, and then the portal just opens up behind them." I'm like, "Oh, okay, right, problem oh, solved." Oh my god, we've all got to get out of here. We've only got thirty seconds to do it. Yeah, or one of us could go back and open up another portal. Yeah, and buy the <laughs> thing, buy the there are a lot of things that like the stakes did not really right. So Michelle Pfeiffer is like, "You guys got to get here." I'm like, "No, all you got to do is walk through the portal." One of you needs to get through, right? And she's right there. One of the walk three through. professional super scientists that are the yeah. only three that got through right. could fix the thing that Cassie built. Yeah. It's easy peasy. That apparently, even though it just allowed MODOK from the other end to order, open the portal, Cassie's figured out how to do that in the five seconds she was there by herself yeah. to open a portal in the quantum. It's amazing world. how that alien technology is really easy See, to use. See, you really enjoy this movie the less you think about it. I think you have to, you have to not think at all yes. to enjoy it. You just mindlessly... Mindlessly consuming. I have one more complaint. And who doesn't love mindless consumption more than you? You mean more than you? <laughs> so, one more complaint that I thought you might have. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a movie full of surprises that were not surprising. Mm. I felt like I felt like you in the theater. I would see the ants in the in the lab in the basement, mm-hmm. and I would say to myself, "Oh, they're coming back." Yeah. Right. So it was it was over and over again. Like the ants show up as soon as you see them in the basement. You know the super intelligent ants are mm-hmm. coming at the end. They're going to be important somehow. Like I, I knew it. Um, the blobby guy is interested for no reason whatsoever in how many holes people have. Mm-hmm. So he's going to get shot through with a bunch of holes. When he said like, seven, did you actually did you actually count your holes? No. Did you? No. You did. I totally did. How many holes do you have? It's seven. Okay. Yeah, right. it's correct. I was like, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Nope, that's right. Two nostrils. Is this two holes or one hole? That's two. But is it though? Like I'm, I'm going to ask whole, the, whole, the no the, the nostril expert. Is, is it, this is two holes because the nasal passageway would. But guess what? It's one hole. It, I can still breathe through it, even though this hole is closed. That's because it's one hole. Holes. No, it's because it's one hole. Two you holes. haven't closed the whole hole. Do this, and you close two the holes. whole hole, and tell me how well you do. That's because you're closing both. Right, because you've closed the hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not a two debate worth having. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's debate about holes. And then my the the the, the absolute low point of the movie for me mm. is when they did that like glass onion style flashback. With the earbuds fritzing. Oh, yeah. For Hank. You know, like, like all of a sudden, it flashes us back in time to, like, 
two slow motion scenes of him like reaching at his ear because his earbuds are buzzing a little mm-hmm. bit. It was so lame. Well, he, here's what's going it to add, just... here's what's going to add to the lameness. Yeah, because of those flashbacks. Yeah. Only one was actually shown in the film. I thought that the was the first true. one. I was like, yeah. you didn't show that there. That's awesome. The first time they show it is the one where I think I think it's when he's in the bar. Is the first time they yeah. show it. They never show him like twigg- twiggling his ear. So for me, when, when they're right in the quantum realm, the first one was like that didn't. Ha- that's not a flashback to a thing that happened. It's a bunch of surprises you can't flashback that to a surprising. thing that didn't happen. Right. When, and be and like, like it's a glass onion. Oh, yeah. did you see did this? You like, yeah. Well, no, I didn't see it. Because you didn't show it. it. And the second I was like, oh, that scene yeah. where it was yeah. literally the only thing going on. And Hank yeah. was like, yeah. I was like, yes, I did in fact yes. see that scene. Right. As soon as you saw him the first time you see the big earbuds in, you're like, okay, the earbuds. Yeah. The earbuds matter. What could be talking to him? I wonder. I can't figure out what that <sighs> ant-shaped shadow yeah. is that's looming over him now that he's grasped his ship. Yeah. So that's my list of complaints. But I've got some fair or foul that large All right. additional complaints uh, if you want to hear them. Let's see. Do I have anything bad that I haven't talked about? Oh. Oh, I, again, I didn't like that they didn't include Lewis. Right, I might have. Yeah. I might have liked to, instead of having him having lunch with Jimmy Woo. I might have liked that to be yeah. Lewis. Like that was that was yeah. unfortunate. Uh, Fair. Again, the, that we didn't. It wasn't really an Ant Man and the Wasp film. Um. Uh, yeah, actually, no. I think I talked about all of my bad. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Oh, the other thing in terms of of you know, there's the bit about like Cassie's, you know, protesting the homeless people. Right, and then there's well, also not the protesting homeless people, or protesting, protesting on behalf for, of, yeah, yes, just to be. But clear. then there's also the whole thing like the work that Hope is doing. It mentions that she's like creating affordable housing. I'm like, shouldn't she and Cassie have more issues then? Because yeah. it feels like again another place where the world building right really doesn't make sense. Because if Hope is doing all of this stuff, right, then the, or, there shouldn't be as it seems like there shouldn't be as much of a problem. So yeah, the the world building in the beginning was not great. Yeah. So we're running a, a bit long, I think, but I got a bunch of ideas I can bounce off you. You can give quick feedback. To. Right, this is your favorite foul? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is from a person that goes by Critical Critique with mm. K's. No. Well, Good thing they stopped. There's not a third. Yeah, there's just third K's. K's. Good so thing okay. they stopped at two. This is their observation of what's bad about the film. Mm-hmm. It sh- um, should have made a statement, and I feel like it didn't, because mm. it's a phase five film in mind. Mm. But in spirit, it's phase four. Ah, foul. How? It's more phase three. <laughs> well, or, or very early. Fa- it's like Spider-Man No Way Home phase four. Like it's, it's, it's peak phase four. There was no peak to phase four. <laughs> no, it was Sp- literally a flat line. Spider- Spider-Man No oh, Way Home was enough. phase four. Okay. And this is basically like that in my mind. It is. That is. Or your the, mind half, is the half of it that I'm going to operate right now. funny, funny. Yeah, I remember we always used to argue this with my friends in graduate school because yeah. I, I would talk about like I could watch TV and not really think about that stuff. And they're like, yeah. how do you do that? I'm like, yeah. I just do it. They're like, a, I mean, I can think about this stuff and I can not think about it. It's a good stuff. talent to have. It's a good talent to have. Critical Critique also thought that Janet and Hank should have died. Someone should have died. That was, I mean, the, that, the, 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 <laughs> the way in which this yeah. film avoided a lot of like – No stakes. No like, Yeah, like, like Scott and Hope should have been stuck in the quantum realm. I think Janet. I, I probably would have killed Janet. Um, yeah. Or or Hank in the plane crash or something. Yeah, yeah. there. I agree that there, it was kind of okay. like, with a, with a lot of the MCU films, and, and maybe this is kind of the problem with Phase Four. Yeah. Is there aren't a lot of stakes, and Marvel's got. We've talked about this before. Right. Marvel's gotten very conservative. Yeah. In that, you know, this felt like a yeah. movie like maybe particularly if you want to establish King the Conqueror as a big yeah. bad. Maybe you have him take one of the main characters right. out. In a world in which superhero movies had never existed, and this was the first yeah. one, it it would feel like something. Oh more yeah, probably. I agree. Yeah. And it does. Um, Joe Maximoff on Twitter pointed out that Kang has killed Thor, right? Yes, or a version of Thor. Well, and he, he's told us he killed right. Thor. We, and I mean, Wanda we, we killed have... a version of Captain Marvel. Correct. So she can't wait for the standoff. Which is going to literally shake the MCU when the Scarlet Witch and Kang. Should we be optimistic about a big Scarlet Witch Kang showdown? Mm. Ooh, she'd be good on A Force though. Yeah, there's not. I mean, in the comics, there's not a lot of Scarlet Witch Kang kind of kind of conflict. I mean, I mean yeah, I'm trying so to it's think. Too far removed from canon for you to be excited about. Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, the only. I mean, the character that that has the most connection, unfortunately, is the Carol Danvers Ms. Marvel for really bad reasons in yeah. Avengers. Um. 
So oh. yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, Kang is kind of a a big bad, but he doesn't really have like the really personal connection to any one Avenger. It's just as the Avengers are yeah. who he's always. Okay. Well, so you're not you're not very excited about that then. About Wanda Kang? Yeah. No. Okay. How about this one? I mean, Wanda. I mean, again, the Scarlet Witch should be a bigger problem for Ultron in the in the comics in the seventies. Yeah. Wanda was the only one that could defeat Ultron because the. I forget what it was the 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 thing that allowed him to actually be adamantium and still move. Yeah, her hex power was the only thing that could mess with that. Got and it. so for Ultron, Wanda was always the most dangerous Avenger. Got it. So you're getting off Juggernaut's helmet. Yeah. Okay. Um, quote. Hot take. Mm-hmm. Comic films are moving further from cele- from the celebrated source materials, making stories mm-hmm. for movies without reflecting beloved comic book ingredients. Mm. The product is emptier. As a result, hmm. get back to adapting beloved comic books. Ah, see, I'm torn because yes. that's a critique of the MCU. Yeah, but it's a critique based on a need for canon. Right. And thus, I'm I'm torn between my two it is, loves. It, it is a moral dilemma. It for is a you, moral I think, dilemma. I have, I have sketched with this one. It does it does sort of make me wonder in that yeah that that it does I mean setting aside sort of the canon question we, we've talked about this before right. And, and this is sort of my hope that maybe with Ant-Man we're moving in a direction. That, that the MCU mm-hmm. has felt kind of directionless. Agreed. Since, so since you think we this lost movie's given us direction, though? I'm hoping that maybe with Kang we're going to get some. Like, at least there's yeah. something we're moving to. I, I, it's, I, it's the other problem, too, is, is the fact that, you know, they've already announced that Kang is the big bad. And we're, you know, how far away from yeah. Kang? Like, the, the Kang movies? I'm like, we already know that. As opposed to having it develop more organically, like it, it's the problem of the MCU success and and where yes, we are. Agreed. That... So, but fair or foul? Feral. Okay. Because it's kind of it's kind of in between. It's interesting because you know who said that? Who? Rob Liefeld. Oh Jesus! But it was then endorsed by Comics on the Green. So Ugh. that's a Rob Liefeld Twitter right yeah, there. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, I no, like it when I catch you with one like that, and you're like, yeah. and then you feel bad because of the person who said it. I mean, I said of... feral, so yeah, but I mean, right, yeah, but you, well. You, which is literally one. Well, of his, to be fair, I'm pretty is he, sure is Farrell his favorite character. That you, oh God, he, I didn't even of think the about characters that. he created. Oh, Jesus, no, it's not. Did you know Liefeld was coming? Were you like? No, I did not. Punning on Farrell. I was just trying to mix fair and foul. What a terrible character, by the way. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when when Rob Liefeld says beloved characters, he means his beloved characters. So, all right, couple more. Okay, um, the movie is a quote unquote disaster. <laughs> it gives me no joy to watch the franchise oh, devour I, and eliminate its I legacy. I, saw, I think I saw this one. Paul Rudd has endless charm. He Jonathan does. Majors has considerable acting talent. Yipper. Neither is strong enough to carry this bloated whale carcass. See, I just I did not feel the film to be bloated at all. If anything, it's not bloated enough. That is. They needed more. Of they all the things more. you've said on the show. They needed like another that ten minutes of, of, of world the... building. It was not bloated. It needed more. They needed. No, they needed, needed like another ten to fifteen minutes. It needed to minutes slim down. Of world. No, there's a what, good deal. What's to slim down? Modok. No, well, he's pretty minor. I'd cut the Modok. You could. I mean, you. Yeah, I, you could cut the Modok, but I still. It's... How about this one? Okay. Um, I don't think I've laughed so hard in any other Marvel film. I will say that when did, I saw. Did you laugh out loud? I did not, but I will okay, say that God. when not I went. Funny. You know, I, the second not time funny. that I went and saw it, not only was. The, the theater pretty full. Mm-hmm. Um, people were were laughing and people applauded the movie at the end. The only other film where I've seen that was No Way Home. They applauded. Yeah, that movie? I was like, wow, people are really liking this film. People. Yeah, they were. Yeah, it was. I sometimes, like the only other thing was the mo- the moments where the the two other Spider Men show up in in No Way Home and the cheers that went up there. Yeah, that was basically what I had. You at know, the what, end of. you know what the result of that is. We have 48 screenings a day of Ant-Man, and we can't get one screen for After Sun yeah. at Musick. I know. It's just... Uh, I feel bad about that. You should. What's After Sun? The Paul Mescal. Okay. Who's Paul Mescal? Ordinary people? Or normal people? What's the name of that? The Netflix thing? The one that's based on the book? Yeah. It's normal people. Normal people. I've not seen it or read the book. The guy's like a huge star now. Is Nominated? He? For an Oscar? Has he been tapped for a role in the MCU yet? <laughs> no, he's not sold out yet. He's still making art. Well, maybe he's Reed Richards. He could be Reed Richards. He'd be, he wouldn't be a bad Reed the Richards. The other nice thing about Ramatut is, you know where Ramatut first appeared? Uh, Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four, which means if we're going to get the backstory on Ramatut, maybe that's how we get Fantastic I got, Four. I got the tut. Um, I got two more for you. Which issue of Fantastic Four? Uh, number uh, 28. No. What was it? I think it's 20. I'm pretty close. Yeah, you were you were, you were me, closer than good. I thought you'd be. I wrote that part of the book yeah. originally. Like I took the first. That's run true. At it. You did. You should so, know that better. Oh, I, 
I, I do. That's why I got all that. But I, so you think I should memorize all the – Yes. No, the not, the not dates. All right, I yes. Got you two. should memorize all the dates. Nope. I'm not – And numbers. Not what historians do. All right. Two more. Mm-hmm. From BuzzFeed News, mm-hmm. no other Marvel installment has felt as weighed down by its obligations to the franchise. Disagree. Disagree. Iron Man 2, way worse. I don't, I, I don't know if I'd say way worse. I, I, and, and, no, and, 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 and I think they might be equivalent movies. Yeah, and I, but see, that's the thing. Like, I did not tread feel like this water, was this was water. as having to like no. gesture towards there other was, things. There was not a single moment in the film where Ant-Man was treading water and you just want to take your hand and shove him under. No. And just hold him. No, no, not for even a moment. Yeah, no. I would, I would say in terms of uh, I, Iron Man two for me is much more clunky in terms of that. We need to do a Marvel film. Draft, I'd argue right? Age of Ultron is clunkier than this, and you know how much I love Age of Ultron. Well, Age of Ultron would would be at the bottom of my list, as you know. So yeah, well, not the bottom, bottom. Yeah, but I, that, that's the I I because I, I saw we a bunch. Of, I saw a number of reviews were like, oh, it's just setting everything up and blah yeah. blah blah. I did not. I mean, the the post credit scenes absolutely, but that's what post credit. I did not feel that as much in the other film, in the film itself. Yeah, I, I have to say we we're gonna have to do a Marvel draft. Okay, because I think it would give us a good chance to talk through mm-hmm. the strengths and weaknesses. Um, finally, mm-hmm. one final fair file. Yes. This is from Flavor Wire. Mm-hmm. I thought you were about to say Flavor Town. <laughs> Going to Flavor yeah, Town. is here. If we could have him on the show, mm. oh, it'd be so good. Is Ant Man worth seeing? Yes. Fair. As if. It's a question. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, as if my answer matters, like no, all I... Marvel movies, it'll mm-hmm. make a mint. Yeah, it's doing pretty well. His answer? Sort of. And I think that's a, I think that's a pretty fair assessment of this film. See, I, I you, like, again, is it worth saying? I really enjoyed this film. Sort of worth saying. It's a fun I, film. Again, was I not clear? Setting aside its, I race, did it's, it's not racist really politics. Enjoy this film. It's an enjoyable film. Right. So, besides the racism besides and the colonialism, racism. setting that all aside, and the the really awful politics, yeah, you found it to be a romp. It's a good fun. It's a good fun film. Like a romp through the Western frontier. Would that be your tagline? Like, <laughs> no. if, like if, if there was an even more mashed up Patrick Hamilton, no. like. Like, quote on the poster would be like, it's nope. like a romp through the American frontier. No, no, listen, to be fair. Patrick Hamilton. No, you don't, you have to. Patrick L. Mis- Hamilton. No, it, it, that's not the entire quote. Yes. It's a romp through the Western frontier if you just turn that part of your mind off. <laughs> what scares me about movies like this is people don't even realize that's part of their mind. Yeah, no, that's, right. It that's, just reinforces well, that, a whole maybe, set of assumptions. Well, and maybe, that they have and about maybe the world. that explains why the film is generally proving popular with audiences. Right. Is that it's it's doing a narrative that that you know, particularly American audiences, we, well, we white love. People do really good stuff. Yeah, look at these white people helping these these indigenous populations. Who could complain? Who could complain about a white savior? People always liked saviors. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. You, no. It's it is it is. It is are good it, people. And unfortunately, it 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 is There's savior, good saviors on both dragged sides. down by the sci-fi tropes that I would otherwise like to have seen it transcend. It does not trend. This is not a transcendent movie. No, not in that sense. No, in any sense. Again, if you just shut your mind off, there's a kind of transcendence in that. Well, we made it I through mean, the show, though. If I'm sitting on the chair, like, just drooling, oh, movie. Yeah. That's what I feel like you looked like at the theater. <laughs> like, just, like, with the things holding your eyes open, so you can't, you can't stop watching. You know, you obviously needed those because you fell asleep during I the first scene. I did not actually fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Was, no, you dozed it, off. Sorry. I just Can I just say, I'm very, I'm very pleased we had this entire conversation, mm-hmm. and no punches were thrown. No. It was a very civil we are, yes. disagreement. Yes. About a really... God awful film. Not god awful. Awful. A film that could have been better, but it was okay as I, it is. I would say, I would say it's not terrible. Yeah. It is not. It might not quite reach good. No, no, because it's already shot past that to great. No, it's definitely not great. So it's so good. You put this in the top ten Marvel movies. No, it's probably not in the top ten. And greatness doesn't extend through ten of them. Does it's it? probably it's There's probably, probably what, for me four or five great Marvel. I mean, films. again, this is why, as I've been saying, we need to do a Marvel draft because we haven't really done what's in the top ten for what a, a great <laughs> what, what a great idea, Patrick. He would give us a chance to talk about things like that. That's what? unbelievable. That was... I wish I wish I had oh. just a tenth of your your your. <laughs> Inspiration. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. And now the blows come. Yeah. 
<laughs> it would it would be a good end of the show if the people just heard a flurry of blows. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. You just, you, you, All right, so you, you we walked will, into that too well. We will do a Marvel draft. Yeah, no, it's hard because yeah, as, it would be, it as would, you've said, there's so many films now. Like, I'm not even right. sure what's in my top. And if you're anymore. and if you're saying great, I, I, I'm not sure there's probably ten not, great. I'm Marvel not sure films. it's great. It's it's right. it's for me. I would say it's probably going to end up. It's probably in the upper half. I would say it is so. lower middle, but I could be wrong. I'll need to go back. And yeah, that's, I've got to go list, back and, you know? and see. But yeah, it's probably. I mean, if, if if there's 30 films, this might be somewhere between 15 and 11 for me. I would think between like 15 and 18 for yeah, me. So. But I'm just I'm guessing. So maybe yeah. we agree. Yeah. On 15. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's the thing. I've got to go back and look. Like I know what my top like three or four are, and then after that, it gets very fuzzy. It would be very interesting to draft against each other. It would be. Because I, I mean, think, as, as I just suggested, I wonder how much I wonder how much overlap there would. Well, that's for a future episode. Yeah, that yeah, we will figure out in a future episode. Yeah, I think for this episode, there's nothing more to say. No, except that you can listen to this episode on CougarRadio.net, 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. That's right, drive time. Until next week. <laughs>